Hello and welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Um, one of the videos with the most views uh, is the .NET unpacking video where I, where I unpacked a nanocore red. And um, I don't think it's quite that good because I was, I was quite confused while, while using the NSPY. Um, the reason is that I used an old version of it and I was expecting features that this old version didn't have. So I would like to make an update on how to use the NSPY, the new version of it, um, probably. Uh, actually, you don't even need um, .NET Unpacker or Megadumper anymore because now you can use the NSPY to dump the memory yourself. But we will just see um, how how we use uh, the NSPY with this sample. So that's our sample right here. Um, just the way I usually get it without an extension and without well, any information on it. And uh, most of the time I like to check it first with, well, where is it? PE Studio or Portex Analyzer or anything similar, uh, just to take a look into if if it's a p file of course um so no um p e studio has a GUI that Portex analyzer doesn't have, so it's uh, most of the time easier to see uh, the important stuff and um let's check this okay this is uh, well, firstly, this is not a dot net file it has several imports a dot net file usually just has one import. And um, also, if you look at those strings in here, it doesn't look like a typical .NET file, which would use functions um, related to .NET. Um, but this looks like a, a raw SFX file. You see the debug path here, or also here, um, that this is an, a self-extracting executable, and also the um, archive is in the overlay and usually all that all this executable does is uh, unpacking the archive and the overlay and maybe doing some installation or running something yeah so uh, you can simply unpack this with 7, seven zip so we will just do that right here Okay, three files. Um, these, this, uh, I don't want to click it. So I, I should use my disarm script here, but I didn't install it on this machine because I prepare them li just right before I make the video. So, okay. But this had an interesting icon already. And those are just some unknown binary files, which we should uh, look at. Okay, and this too. Now, this doesn't make much sense here, um, but it has patterns. It has, if it's something that's encrypted, it's uh, likely not as not a cryptographically safe encryption um, because of the patterns. And like, if this would be X or you would, you might conclude that these parts here uh, are the key. Um, usually the key will show in the zero areas of the file. Okay, what's this? It's also just stuff. And oh, we can't do anything with it. Um, looks pretty dense too. And if you put this in Portex Analyzer, you would probably see a high entropy image here. Yeah, okay. Mostly, but not, not every, it's not everywhere. So, okay, uh, yeah, and the other one, no, that, ah, okay, no, I just confused them. This is the one where, where I said we have these uh, patterns, um, which might be an XOR encryption. So you see that there is, although there are high entropy areas, there are also some low entropy area, so there's still kind of a structure in this file. And for that one, I think it should be quite, yeah. 
this is how a more safe encryption would look like or even compression uh, but I don't know what it is so let's check our uh, .exe file okay we don't need those anymore yes please this one um <laughs> That's the .NET file. Um, we already see here that the signature is there, and also the one and single import that's usually done for .NET file with mscore.dll. And here you can see uh, some, yeah, .NET typical functions. And system reflection is quite typical for for injectors, uh, for for .NET packed files that use reflection to run. Uh, the packed um, file inside. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at it with a decompiler. Okay, this is the metadata information, and it's already not that. Uh, well, if I would see this, I would immediately assume it's malware because uh, legend files do not use like random strings normally. I mean, there are always exceptions of uh, people who like to protect the files and with protection that's kind of malware-like. Um, but most of the time, it's it's really malware if you see this. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's just take a more of an overview. It's not I uh, hear a late call. That's that's probably where um the packed file is called. Now the question is where's the packed file? Okay, that looks good. Um uh, something that's worth remembering is that seventy seven and ninety are M and Z so this looks like an a p file that's saved right here in the byte array um because it starts with mz then there are zeros mostly and then there's the ms dos sub message i assume uh, it is i i'm not able to see the matrix but the pattern really looks like it um the cool thing with um dot net is if you like to unpack it statically, you can just use, for instance, Visual Studio um, to copy and paste the decompiled code in there and um, unpack it this way. We will just do it here. Visual C Sharp, I like C Sharp more than Visual Basic. Uh, I can adjust, I can just parse it better, read it faster. Okay. Let's create the project and copy this. Yeah, okay. Now just remove this. We don't need that. And we don't need that. The stuffs. Okay. And we will create an array here. This is our byte array. And then we will just write this stuff to. I think it's. Foul. Oh, I hate the auto correction. File, write all bytes I guess uh, then it should be the path and then it should be the byte array um, and for the path oh come on uh, double slashes come on desktop dump one Ah, uh, here. 
And I think it needs an import. Yes. And it tells me system IO. We will use that import. Okay. And if I run it, it should create our dumped file on the desktop if I did everything correct. Uh, well, let's check. And it didn't. Oh, it took a while. Failure. <laughs> Uh, okay, I made some mistake in the path. <laughs> okay, let's check this out. What? What's the problem now? Oh, that's the same, right? Please do that again. Ah, oh, okay. The debug go wasn't set. What's that? Ah, oh, wait. I really hate that. I think the the error message was not related at all to what uh, to the cause, and uh, that's something I really hate. <laughs> um, okay, but now, yeah, now it worked. Okay, um, that's our dump dumped file, and if you check this in uh, the hex editor, you can see that it's indeed um, starting with mz. And here's the uh, this program cannot be run in DOS mode stuff message. Okay, it's quite small. The file is small. Um, how much is that? Okay, only four ki kilobytes. Um, that's not much. I guess we will have to unpack further. And let's check this file. Here. Here's the dump. Okay. Um, yeah, interesting. Now, we could now uh, proceed doing the same thing we already did. Like, uh, we could now just copy and paste the code and run it. Uh, so, unpack it basically, um, yeah, with, with our code statically. But there's a faster way, and that's using the NSPY. And I will just do that now. Um, let's check first what, what happens here. Um, that's the main um, method. And it reads all bytes from array 2. And the, here's array. Array is created from the data in here. And it uh, applies the split method on that, on that. So it will split here. And it was split here, and that means array, array. Okay. Okay. I think due to the split, this should be array two, because it splits twice at that point, and array zero is this. Um, array zero is used here. Okay, well, I could be wrong though. Okay, here's array two. Now it gets a bit confusing, but let's just unpack it. Um, it looks like it's reading this uh, file here, and then it uh, calls the decrypt with the key array zero, which is this, and then decrypts the data, and afterwards uh, calls assembly load on the decrypted file. So that means um, this file contains our packed file. Yeah. I will start the ends by now. And there it is. The dump. OK. 
okay. And we also know where we need to set our breakpoint because at this point, this is the um, byte array that's passed to the decrypt function. And here it will, in this loop, decrypt the data. And at this point, it should be um, in memory and uh, in a decrypted state. Okay, so we add the breakpoint here and run it. And um, that's something that we uh, couldn't do with this old version of the NSPY. Now we see here the locals, uh, local variables and their contents. So yes, please expand it. It says it's too big, but it shows some, some values and it starts with 45A and those are the M and Z again. Uh, this time in hex instead of decimal values, but um, it's again a packed um, part of executable as I would assume. And we can now right click here and show in memory. And it has already selected that memory area, and now we can just save the selection to disk dump2. Let's please save. And that's it. We don't want to run it here. Um, now we have another dump right there. Well, that's the second dump. And it's, oh, it's, uh, okay, you could see it already here, powered by smart assembly. That means it has used an, an obfuscator. And uh, this version, <coughs> this obfuscator can be defeated using d4 dot. Uh, so let's just use that. You just uh, need to drag and drop it in there. Yeah, detected smart assembly. And where is the clean? Here. It's the clean dump. And now we can just use that one to check. Okay. looks much better already. Now here's uh, some more, there are some more things going on than just unpacking. Um, it has some anti, well, it, it tries to detect certain tools like Fiddler and it tries to detect v VMware and VirtualBox. So it would probably not run if it does this. Uh, which is interesting. Um, but it, that also depends on certain settings. It's some of those, you see the if, all of the if statements right here, uh, check some kind of settings that can be set. And so it's probably created by a builder um, to do this. Um, and here you see get prog address, which is typically and load library typically used by packers. Um, okay, so I guess we s we have to unpack again. Um, let's just do that. Next layer, and this is really. Um, not that uncommon that you have multiple layers. It's not really a problem, but it's annoying uh, having so many layers of packed files. And ah, here, this is the string that's used to set the settings of this. And if you want to, you can kind of uh, will try to analyze it and see uh, what this all means by checking the if statements, but yeah, um, let's just try to unpack it for now. We'll step into, well here there's a split on those. Uh, okay. Lots of stuff going on. And I don't know what it does here, but here you can see it reads all bytes from something. 
Um, let's see if we get the. Okay, I think I should go into this one. We will add a breakpoint. Does it go back there? Yeah. Come on. Okay, we will start it again. Step into. Is the breakpoint still set? Yeah. Please there, then step into. Then. Let's check what happens. Hmm. Here's also some kind of array. We just that this is the array of the settings. Yeah. Okay, I guess uh, now that I started it multiple times, it might not unpack properly, so I'm not quite sure if I have to repeat this. Oh, I'm Let's go in here. turns here. Well, maybe we can also get it to this point and continue. Okay, what's this? Yes, please expand. Mm -hmm. Wow, we have several arrays and here's some encoded stuff and here yes please show it's also some encoded stuff step into please and here it does the decoding wow hey great let's check this that's not decoded. It's also array. I'm not sure where it is. The array. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, now look at this. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the naming here. Why it's called A0. But uh, here's again for D5A. That's the MZ, um, and I guess it's in this area, but really I don't know what's named this way. Um, okay, we will show it here, and then save the selection, and we have our third dump. Three, save. Okay, Let's please stop. It's probably now also running in the background, the malware, but I have no internet connection. Nothing should happen. Um, this is our dump file. And we should take a look at it, I guess. Also, PX Studio. Cool. This is not a .NET executable anymore. Oh yeah, this is how it looks like, the enemy. <laughs> um, it has an overlay with just zeros in it, so it might be that it, well, that might be caused by a bug when writing or something, or just, um, okay, but not much interesting stuff here. It doesn't look packed, though, um, if you look at those. Um, looks quite normal 
So maybe we are at the end now. And yeah, that's good. Um, if you see this, um, it's it's a password stealer, credential stealer. So uh, here it tries to read passwords from um, from Thunderbird and uh, from Mozilla. Here you see the sign on Escalite from, I guess from uh, Mozilla, and the yeah maybe also the internet history that's been stolen, um, Outlook credentials maybe too, and this is quite typical for keyloggers because they have to lock the keys that you press and they would do this uh, this way. Um, yeah, so I looked up this file, um, uploaded it to VirusTotal and it showed as um, Netwire RC backdoor. Um, I'm not sure that it is exactly that backdoor, but I guess so. Uh, I haven't seen it before, and, um, so I cannot really uh, recognize it from from my experience. Okay, um, and that's it. We unpack this file in, well, let's say four layers. Um, the first was this uh, SFX, and then we had two uh, .NET layers, and then we had uh, the last one was this. Um, okay, three .NET layers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you have any questions, please um, post them below. And uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>